All right, back at the dusty shop, bringing this big gnarly black walnut slab out to start leveling it up and get doing the flattening on the router sled we made here. I got a big two inch surfacing bit up on that Bosch router and we just back and forth slowly as you go. Flatten and flatten and the thing was so cupped and, and the knots. It, it was very slow go process doing that. Right. That's I'm showing there after I flattened the bottom see. of it. It's the huge cup that I had to take out of it. So I started with a two inch slab and I ended up getting down to about an inch and a quarter. And that's pretty much where they're sitting before I built the form. And there I'm putting the form together. Some just some plywood, Tyvek tape over top of everything to keep the epoxy from sticking to it. And then we rip down some plywood for the sides of the form. We Tyvek those, and then I pocket screwed the whole thing together. It ended up getting pocket screwed to my table. <laughs> I guess that's okay. It didn't seem to hurt anything. Uh, so there's the slabs waiting their turn. Right here, I'm, I'm just penciling in the the river. Kind of, you know, that, that one board was so straight, I just kind of wanted it to contour and follow that other board a little bit more. So I just penciled it in a little bit and then I took the angle grinder with a uh, 40 grit sanding disc on it and just hogged it out. Yeah. Got that how we liked it pretty much and then I threw it in the form and we put a coat of shellac on it. I got that tip from uh, Blacktail Studios. He's like the river table master. That's kind of who inspired me to make this one. And the schlacks, it's so when you get the black epoxy that drips on that pretty black walnut, it doesn't get in there and stain it. Here we're pouring the first, first of four pours it took us for this one. We ran out about after the third pour. I wasn't going to make it quite to the top, so we had to reorder and wait about 10 days for it to come. But that was okay. It, it cured. Just sat there for 10 days. Then we just scuffed it up with some 220 a little bit before we, you know, did our final pour. That caulking on there, that's just a little dam in case I over poured it. It, it wouldn't seep out and kind of drift all over the whole slab. It would kind of stop at that caulk joint. And you see there how this stuff sits down so nice. I was just really impressed at how flat and smooth and it just is really cool. You took the torch, of course, after each pour and you would torch and get the bubbles out of it. And here where I got it out of the form, put it back on the router sled and back and forth we go again getting it all for the final flatness not smoothness just getting it the final flatness the router sled seemed to leave like a scalloping mark each pass it was a two inch bit but you know every inch and a half or whatever it just left a scallop mark and because of the slab had through cracks actual through cracks uh, we put these bow ties in to kind of stabilize it we just cut them out of some maple and placed them how we wanted and used a marking knife and marked the edges out around it and then I took the main portion of the material away with that spiral up bit I think that's what you call it and then took the chisel and cleaned it up to our mark line. Which right there, there was knots around there. So that was, you know, a little tricky. And obviously that's where I'm gluing them in after I got the 
got them dialed in with the chisel how we liked, and they were going to fit nice and snug. We glued them up and tapped them down in there with the mallet. Left them about, I don't know, maybe, maybe an eighth proud of the top, and then I sanded it down to the, to the top. And that's basically the top after I got the bow ties in and everything's been sanded to about 320 in that photo. And then we decided we're going to build a base for it. I see a lot of the guys just using these metal bases they either fabricate or you order them online. Just put some metal legs under your top. But I wanted to have a, a wood base under it. We decided on a trestle style with the with the stretcher that uh, goes through each side of the base and then it gets secured with the wedge and it's all no fasteners only glue it's, a, it's an inch and a half mortise and tenon we just used a there's almost no chiseling. I just used that router to make the mortise. And I used the table saw for the tenon. And then I dialed it in with that OD or whatever that is. That my little air sander, whatever you want to call that. One. I guess that's cheating where I rounded those corners off of the of the tenon, but I mean that's it was snug fit. It was okay. And that's the table there before any finish. There's the two coats of shellac we chose to put on the base, which is a beautiful finish, by the way. For the top, we decided to do epoxy. I had never fooled with any epoxy. I figured it was an epoxy river table. Let's go epoxy on the finish. And that's where I had to rig up that big sander. I was sanding the the seal coats down and it was fighting me a little bit but I guess that's another story but we got it we got it then that's the dust tent I made after I put the flood coat on I didn't want any airborne particulae to settle down on that so I made that little dust tent which ended up being a very good idea thank you very much I had to peek though didn't I and it was looking pretty cool. <laughs> there was still a few, probably from me peeking at it, a few little dust particles got in there, but nothing really. And that's it the next morning. Then I, I waited a couple days for it to cure a little bit better, and I set it up on the base there, brought it in the house. And that's it. That's how we made our first black epoxy, black walnut river table with a epoxy finish on the top. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button. And subscribe to our channel. Plenty more, plenty more tales and plenty more videos coming. Have a great day and thank you for watching.